What's up everyone, my name's Robbie. this is Robbie O'Neill, and today we have an awesome video. So right now as I'm filming this video, there's actually quite a bit of volatility in the stock market. And the thing is, volatility is normal in the stock market. And looking back over the past 20 years or so, there's actually been quite a few bear markets. Some markets have seen some legit crashes, while others have seen some subtle declines, but still with a decent amount of volatility. And so today we're talking about an ETF that could help you in one of these bear market situations. So let's take a look at this ETF. We'll run the intro, then we'll get started. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and get started. But first, please hit that like button. And so this is the Cambria Tail Risk ETF, ticker symbol T-A-I-L. Okay, so what is the Cambria Tail Risk ETF? What does it do? So let's take a look at the fund description. And there's a few main things that I kind of want to point out here. So Cambria ETF seeks to mitigate significant downside market risks. So that's one important thing. Essentially, this fund is only designed to be invested in when the market goes down. You should not own this when the market's going up. So that's the first thing that you should know. Second thing you should know is that it invests in out-of-the-money put options purchased on the U.S. stock market. Now, not a lot of the funds and assets in this invest in those put options, a small amount do. The amount of put options that this thing invests in, it should be enough so that the strategy works when the market goes down significantly. And then the other thing is that a majority of the money, which you'll see when we go over the top 10 holdings, is invested in just treasuries. So intermediate term treasuries is what this is investing in. So very much not as risky as a US stock market S&P 500 type ETF. So in that sense, it is not as risky. And then it has these put options to try to generate um, alpha or return when the market goes down. So let's move on. So it's the Cambria Tail Risk ETF and ticker symbols tail, right? And so what it does is, you know, it's a marketing thing, of course, but it's, it's utilizing uh, the idea that there is tail, potentially tail risk in the market or more tail risk than you might think. And this is an example from PIMCO. And this illustration shows on the left here, this is, let's say, the loss. And so this is like the tail of this bell curve, right? And so it goes up and then it goes back down to the right here, right? And so these tails, if the tails are actually fatter, if they're thicker, they would look like this, right? So this kind of greenish um, bell curve would be a thicker fat tail distribution. And so in that situation, if this happens, then there is more of a potential of bigger losses, right? And so that's kind of the idea. So the tail risk ETF, Essentially, it's trying to mitigate the risk of tail risk. And if we take a look at the expenses of this fund, uh, so you have a 0.59% expense ratio, and I'll talk about this in a second, why you shouldn't really care that much about how much the expense ratio is, but move on to that in one second. So let's go on to the AUM. So 346 million, this is a fund that has enough assets that you shouldn't have to worry about the liquidity of the fund. It's definitely got enough money in it. And then it's actually got a little bit of a distribution yield at 0.37%. So let's talk about the expense ratio real quick. Because I know some people at home, they're very much uh, averse to paying more than like 0.05% like in a uh, Vanguard uh, ETF that invests in just like the S&P 500 or a total uh, market ETF or anything like that. So think about it like this. You should only own this ETF when there is significant volatility in the market, and it shouldn't be a long time that you would own this. So this is what we might call it tactical. So meaning that you would cycle into this, you would reallocate your portfolio to have some exposure to this ETF when things are kind of going bad, when there's lots of volatility, maybe uncertainty, and you think the market might be going down. In that case, First off, you put a portion of your money, not all of it, into this, but also you shouldn't hold it for very long. And the way the ETFs charge you, it's you know an annual amount of money that you would spend having this ETF. So 0.59%, the annual uh, amount is what the, they're charging you. So think about it, if you only held it for a month, well, it's only one twelfth of this actual fee, right? So essentially, if you hold this thing for a few months, maybe the most, the expense for this would end up being like point maybe one five percent. So 
I would say that because you're not holding this thing probably for a long period of time, you wouldn't end up paying 0.59%. So just something to take into consideration. So for Tails Top 10 Holdings, the largest amount of money in this thing is actually in US Treasury bonds. So you might be saying to yourself, well, you know, that's pretty boring. Of course, you know, they don't lose lots of money when the market declines a lot. And yeah, that, that's definitely true. And it's really, this thing is, have, it's holding quite a bit of money in um, treasury bonds. Also tips, uh, US Treasury inflation index bonds, they're pegged to inflation, right? Um, and then cash. So the majority of the assets in this thing, like 94 probably percent, maybe 95% of the assets in this thing are actually in cash and treasuries, right? So nothing crazy, uh, definitely not sexy, right? But where it could generate alpha or outperformance when the market goes down is inside these put options that they have. And essentially they're, they're leaps. And so maybe you know what a leap is, maybe you don't. A leap is a long-term equity anticipation security. And basically it's, a, 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 it's an option contract, a put option, that's going out like a year or more probably, okay? So it's a very long period of time. And what it's saying is it's betting that the index is going to be a much lower amount of money pretty far out into the future. And so this thing, for example, 1.66% is in a, um, a March 18th of 2022 leap, or you could call it a put option, right? So, and the strike or and the price of the index um, the S&P 500 index would be 3,500. So that's what they're doing is they're saying, what if this goes down to 3,500? We would make money if the index falls to that in this period of time. And then, so these are all different types of put options that they're using to generate alpha when there is some type of volatility in the market. Okay, so on to the next one. So I ran some numbers and I put together this chart for you. So this is actually what tail would have looked like during the when the illness struck right so this is the s p 500 as seen through spy which is the etf that tracks the s p 500 so spy is this kind of like um, beige looking line and then we have tail which is the blue line and this is between march of uh march 10th of 2020 uh up until july 2nd of 2020 okay so that's like the time period where the market really declined a lot, but then came back up. And so I wanted to show you what it would look like if you had one of these two funds, okay? So the first thing is um, the percentage return that you would have had if you were holding just the S&P 500 ETF, SPY, um, would have gone down to 22.7%. That's the decline. So that's actually a very big decline, right? And it hurts a lot when you lose that much money. And especially with what was going on at the time, people were like very, you know, concerned about the economy and everyone, of course, you remember the time period, right? Lots of uncertainty. But then if you had this, if you had tail during that period of time, it actually would have gained value. So instead of losing 22%, you actually gained around 10.6%, right? And so, but the problem is with tail is that you're, of course, not supposed to hold it for a long period of time. You're supposed to only kind of um, reallocate into it a portion of your money or cycle some money in and cycle it out, okay? Get that pop and then take the money out. So it's really tactical and it's kind of a bit of time in the market in a way too. So if you had tail this whole time, you actually would have ended up losing 2% um, from, again, March 10th until July 2nd. And then SPY, the S&P 500 would have ended up growing 7.66%. So you would have underperformed for sure. And that's kind of the risk you take with this type of thing. So if you had it a few months here, you actually would have not done as well if you had just invested in the S&P 500. But of course, you didn't have that 22% loss. But the question is, what if you use this as a hedge in a portfolio and don't put all of your money into it, but put like a portion into it? And so an idea would be that maybe you have, let's say you're a long-term indexer and you just have SPY and you're just holding the S&P 500, averaging it over a long period of time. Um, but you don't love risk, right? You don't love crazy downturns. And so what you might do is you say, okay, well, uh, at certain times, I'll put a portion of um, this tail risk ETF into my portfolio. So uh, what you could do is you have 75% of your portfolio 
let's say if you had ten thousand dollars, you put seven thousand five hundred into SPY, and then you would throw in twenty five hundred or twenty five percent of your portfolio into the tail risk ETF, right? And so that's kind of what you do. And so in times when things kind of get crazy, you might throw some money into uh, the tail risk ETF. And then this is what it would look like over the time period. So I ran these numbers and I went back and I said, what if you had, um, during that time period we talked about before from March until July to 2020, what if you had 75% of your money in SPY and 25% in tail, what would your portfolio have looked like? And it would have looked like this. So the idea would be, um, let's say you had SPY until around uh, you know early March 2020. Then you say I want to throw in 25% of my money into this tail risk ETF because you know things are going nuts right now and I'm scared. So what would have happened in this situation is you would have lost at most 14%, 14.36% of your portfolio. When again, remember the S&P 500 lost about 22.7%. So you actually had a lot less downside risk. Um, and so it kind of is smoothing out the, the loss here. And then if you'll see, it actually doesn't do too bad. It, it really stays close to the S&P 500 all the way until March, and then it, it slightly underperforms it a bit. And then at the end, um, you know, you have a 5.23% return instead of a 7.66% return, you know, and some people might really be unhappy about that, but I think a lot of people would be happy to see a lot less of downside risk and then still get pretty close to the outcome. And then eventually, of course, you would want to, you would say that you would cycle out of this uh, tail risk ETF back into the S&P. So, you know, you don't want to hold this thing too long, but you, you kind of hold it for a bit, maybe a month or two months, three months. It depends what's happening, of course, in the economy and the stock market. If things are really bad, you know, you might hold it a little longer, but you know, you hold it for, you try to get that uh, initial little pop when the market goes down, you get a pop in this thing and then you get rid of it. And this is the price returns of what that would have looked like. $10,000 would have gone to 8,564 versus the S&P went to 7,730. And then of course you'd add 10,766 at the end of the time period and 10,523 at the end of the time period. So again, not too bad. I, I think I would be very happy with that hedge personally. So, and this is just the tail, it's showing you how the tail, uh, S tail ETF versus the S&P 500 going back 10 years, sorry, five years. And so what happens in this is you'll see, of course, tail definitely does not perform well because you only want this during times when the market's going down, right? So of course the S&P 500 did a, a good job over this five year period. And so the yellow lines, the S&P 500, would, it would have grown to 17,215 and tail would have lost money. So 8,340 is what you'd have at the end of that. So of course, make much more money if you had invested in the S&P 500 because it was up over that time period. So again, um, tail is kind of something to hold short term, not very long term. And so that's it. I hope that this uh, helped you if you're looking for something to kind of invest in to kind of hedge your portfolio when the market's going down there's a lot of volatility if you're getting scared about things this might help maybe ease some of the the fear um, by adding some money into tail so i hope you like this please hit the like button if you did and subscribe if you want to see future content like this and please watch another one of my videos on the end screen coming up right now